Hello everyone, the Human Floyd here, and I'm going to talk about how Elder Scrolls Online's new buy-to-play model is going to affect the roleplay community. But first, so that we're all on the same page, uh, let me explain exactly how this is going to work. I wasn't going to do a reaction video on this, but it was suggested by one of my patrons, Kaleem, who uh, was apparently throwing oil on my friends and I at the RP PvP event last weekend, so thanks for that. Essentially, when you buy the game now, you will have all of the content up to update 6. So that's Craglorn and all the way up to VR 14 or whatever you just get when you buy the game. And you have that forever without having to spend any more money if you want to. They're going to have a store called the Crown Store. From what they said, there's going to be nothing in the Crown Store that you can't get in game, at least as far as stats go. In the, in the Crown Store, um, which, which is a virtual currency that we're introducing, you'll be able to be, uh, play, uh, buy what we're calling customization and convenience items. Uh, these fall into two broad categories. One is costumes, uh, which you're seeing there now. Uh, costumes you can purchase, uh, um, cooler looking upgraded mounts that are only upgraded in the fact that they're cooler looking. They're actually uh, the same um, tech-wise as the mounts that are in game now. Uh, some pets, here you can see a Guar mount, which is going to be available at the time of, uh, of uh, Tamriel Unlimited launch on PC and of course console. Um, you'll be able to purchase that in the uh, in the Crown Store too. The important thing here is that the, the, the mounts that you buy there aren't any better than the mounts you would buy for in-game gold in the game. They just look cooler and different. This is the kind of stuff that you can expect to see in the Crown Store. They were very uh, sure in their live stream to say that nothing in the Crown Store is something that will give you an in-game advantage. However, you will be able to buy the simple health magicka or stamina potions that aren't as good as the crafted ones, and you'll also be able to buy soul gems and repair kits from the Crown Store. Some people were feeling very betrayed. This person said, what's with these crowns anyway? Didn't Judas just take regular old gold coins? <laughs> Personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, you can continue to subscribe to the game and you'll get a certain amount of crowns to spend on the so store every month. They said it's a pretty sizable amount. Um, and subscribing also gets you like a 10% bonus to XP and a couple of other, other little 10% bonuses. The main thing I think that the subscribing gets you is access to all of the content that they release after Update 6. They're calling them DLCs now. So this means that upcoming content like Merkmire, The Clockwork City, and Orsinium will all be purchasable from the Crown Store as DLC content. However, if you have a subscription, you'll be able to access it without having to pay anything except for the normal subscription fee. And apparently it will be available to you no matter what level you are if you buy it from the store. So that's pretty cool, I guess. So they definitely tried to reiterate many times that it's not buy to win. And whether or not that's true is really up to you and it's to be seen when it actually comes out and how it evolves down the road. But what we're concerned about is how it affects the roleplay community. So a few things are going to happen right away when this releases in March. And the first thing is that we are going to see a massive explosion in the roleplay community as far as population goes. All the people that left are going to come back and try it again and all the people that wanted to try it and have been watching from the outside are going to jump in at the opportunity. So we're going to have a lot of role players, and I imagine that many of them will not stick around for very long because you have people who hop from game to game a lot, and I think that people are going to see this as an opportunity to check out the roleplay community, and some of them will like it and stay, and some of them won't like the game, or there will be something else that catches their eye. So you can expect to see a huge spike and then a huge fall, <laughs> probably within a few months, I would say. But I think in the end, um, we will end up having a larger roleplay community as a whole. More role players means more guilds, more storylines, more opportunities. Uh, it's always a good thing. So with this big influx of people that we're going to have, I want everyone to be prepared to be inviting and friendly, be prepared to answer a lot of questions, 
Um, we want to draw these people into the roleplay community and bring them into the fold and convert them and then make them drink the Kool-Aid. Well, we want these people to stick around and become part of the roleplay community. If you come across some people that are new to roleplaying, you can give them the link tinyurl.com slash rptutorials and it'll send them right to my Elder Scrolls Online role-playing beginner's guide. You can also expect to see more trolls. Personally, I've never seen trolls as that big of a deal. Um, they're pretty easy to ignore. Remember that some trolls actually are curious about roleplay. I've had more than one incident where I ended up actually converting a troll into a role player. So always be open to talking to them and explaining to them what's going on. Of course, some trolls are just assholes and you should report them. Remember that the GMs are out there on the look for trolls. You can always send in a ticket to the GMs uh, letting them know about a roleplay event that you're going to have. Just give them like a week in advance and uh, they will actually make sure to monitor for trolls. Uh, it doesn't work all the time, but sometimes it does, so definitely keep that in mind. So I thought it might be interesting to take a look at some of the things that role players might like to see from the crown store. This one's would actually be for pretty much everyone, guild slots, that would be very nice. Uh, character slots, obviously. Uh, the Explorers pack, uh, which included the ability to play any race in any faction, uh, I feel like that would be a good purchase to have. Um, I heard rumors that they were maybe going to do that every once in a while or something, so we'll see. Uh, character name change, character race change, character faction change, character cosmetic change would be really sweet, and I know a lot of people would like a name change. I know a few people who weren't role players and then became role players and they have a non role play name and it drives them crazy. And uh, there's actually a Reddit thread up. You can go to tinyurl.com slash rpwishlist or click the link in the description below and add your thoughts. So in conclusion, I don't think that Elder Scrolls Online going by to play is that big of a deal. Instead of freaking out about it, people should chill out and turn a potentially bad situation into a good situation before it becomes that. I think the thing that people are really worried about is the loss of the sense of community and just having a bunch of random people all over the place all the time. But this roleplay community is very resilient, we've dealt with the phasing issue, we will deal with this, and I don't really think it's even going to be dealing with anything so much as just taking in all the new roleplayers and seeing who we can keep after the first few months. So take it easy guys, and keep roleplaying. Thanks for watching. Peace.